depression, frustration, anxiety, pain, disillusion. It's just a natural part of the process of becoming a stronger version of yourself. Because problems are what make us grow. Problems are what sculpt our soul. Problems are what make us become more. If we can realize that life is always happening for us, not to us, game over, all the pain and suffering disappears. Your problem is your gift. You're carrying dead weight. And because you got all this dead weight and you're operating over your capacity, it's going to take you that much longer to get there. If you don't know your starting point, friend, you're never going to get to your end point. And so we're being honest and we're being vulnerable and we're looking within and saying, who am I really? And Tozer would say to you and I, you want to know who you are? Just check the circle of your friends. You cannot get there with all of the people that you showed up with because your boat is at its capacity. If the boat is at 1,500 and because you're loyal, you have your boat now at 4,000 pounds in capacity. You are now on a boat that has blessings and opportunities, but it's, it's overweight. It's past its capacity. It don't matter what your mama think. It don't matter what your coworkers think. It don't matter what your siblings think. It don't matter what your children think. It don't matter. They have nothing to do with it. This decision is yours and yours alone. You get to decide. Let me tell you something. You get to decide if I'm going to be rich, poor, mediocre, happy, sad. You, you have a decision to make. As you grow up and get older, you start realizing what actually makes sense for your life and what don't make sense for your life. Because I grew up with my brothers and sisters doesn't mean that we're actually going to walk in the same path. Because I have my friends that I grew up with doesn't mean that we're going to move and walk and have our lives, family, mind state, career choice, the way we think, the way we move, moving in the same direction. And you should understand this, that it was always going to be your family and your friends that would be the first ones to try and talk you out of your vision and your big idea. That's why you're supposed to live your life. Focus on your intentions and do your thing. If I had paid attention to what people thought I was going to do with my life and what my career path would be, I would not be Tyrese Gibson. Character is self-imposed discipline for the sake of moral convictions. Self-imposed discipline. That means a person of character doesn't need the police. They police themselves. A person of character locks themselves up in the prison of their own convictions and they throw away the key. Some of y'all are loyal and have this power struggle with this concept called loyalty. You're so loyal, you're watching your career and your life and your surroundings crash and burn because you're being loyal to those friends. They're insecure and threatened by you and anything that you do and any move that you make. They are angry and mad and jealous and envious about anything that you have going. You hold on to things that don't make sense for the new season of your life. But because you actually know them, because you're comfortable with them, you hold on to dead weight. People are in your life for a reason. Other people are there for a season. But it's important to recognize when people's seasons are over. Now, keeping in mind our idea that a courageous person is not someone who never feels fear, but who fears the right thing at the right time in the right way. What really scares people about these situations is the sense that they're going to be helpless, that all their trust was placed in somebody or something, and now they've been let down and they can't do anything. They're helpless. 
Take your place, make your mark, and live your life. God didn't bring you in this world to wake up and die one day and just be another person that lived and died and didn't do anything significant in this world. You're still alive. So therefore, God is not done with you. Discipline is the root of all good qualities. But you have to absolutely apply it to things outside of just waking up early. It's, it's everything. It's working out, making yourself stronger and faster and more flexible and healthier. It's about disciplining your emotions so you can make good decisions. It's about having the discipline to control your ego so your ego doesn't get out of hand and control you. Character is sacrifice for principles. So character means you are willing to sacrifice friendship to protect your principles. You are willing to lose your best friend in order to keep your principles. The first challenge is for us to find ourselves. And we find ourselves when we discover our purpose. Find that purpose. It's what makes you solid. It's what makes you secure. It's, it's your mooring. It, it keeps you just exactly where you need to be so that you can accomplish what you want to accomplish. And so I think that now more than ever, we must begin to look at what are the things that we can do that will enable us to do some things and, and use some powers that we have that many of us go through life never ever discovering that we have those things going for us. And part of that, I believe, is knowing what it is your life worth. What is it that gives your life a sense of meaning and purpose? A truly confident person's belief in himself is strong enough so that he's able to believe in others. Distrust in yourself breeds distrust in everyone you meet. A confident person gives you confidence. She creates confidence in others. The strength of her character makes you a stronger character. Do you have character? Who are you with right now that you shouldn't be with? Think about it. Society is conspiring all the time in our culture to completely distract you so you never win. To just divert your focus and attention. Look over here. Look at this shiny thing. Worry about what's going on here in this war. And they get these different things on television and our phones and in our lives to just get us distracted so we never get obsessed. We never get laser focused. Ask yourself truthfully, your big goals and dreams, are you really clear on what they are? Because if you don't have that, we can't even get started. Other people will often see how God shaped you before you do. Because when you're naturally good at something, you think everybody's good at it. They're not. And when you're good at something, you just think it's a normal thing. Well, anybody should be able to do that. Well, they, they don't. And so other people will actually have to point it out in you. When the temptations outweigh the benefits, that's all it takes for some very unfortunate things to start happening. In my opinion, and I think there are very few exceptions to this, a bad person is simply somebody who doesn't have enough reasons to be good. Fear kills hope. Fear. Put people in the hospital. Fear can aid you, can hold you back from doing something that you know within yourself that you're capable of doing, but it will paralyze you. And I ask you a question, what is the benefit of giving up on yourself, of not stepping out on life and taking life on? What is the benefit for you? What's the plus in that? And so ask yourself what you're willing to risk. What's the price you're willing to pay? Because what most people do when they're trying to chase their dream or their big outcome, the whole time they're negotiating the price in their head. Should I continue to do it? Is it worth it? I don't know if I can continue anymore. It's getting higher and that price is failure. And what happens is if you don't negotiate that price in advance, it's going to steal your focus and energy and become another distraction. When you find your spiritual gift, all of a sudden it'll give you an energy that when you're in the area of your weaknesses, you get tired, don't you? But when you're in the area of your strengths, you're energized. 
Decide to develop the habit right now, the habit of focusing on what's right in your world instead of what's wrong. The habit of focusing on what you do have instead of what you don't have in a situation. Because those habits form the chain of your ultimate character, of who you become and how you end up living your life. We've got to condition ourselves, because if we don't, we'll go back to the automatic state that most people live in in today's society. Wisdom is a unique commodity, if indeed it can even be called a commodity. Unlike the other things people hunger for, wisdom is very hard to visualize. Books aren't wisdom. They're just pieces of paper bound together. Books can help create wisdom in people's mind, but if you look inside their heads, you won't find any wisdom there. Let me give you just a few tips on time management essentials. First of all, you run the day or it runs you. It's not that difficult to get something started and you run it for a while and after a while it starts running you. That's part of the challenge. Next, the time you've already committed to labor is enough time. If you're working already 8-10 hours a day, that's about it. You just can't work much more than that. Uh, bursts at a time you can work 12, 14, 16, right? I'm sure we've all learned to do that, put in the extra time. But after a while, you pretty well have to put your life in balance or your health is in jeopardy and your heart's in jeopardy, your blood pressure's in jeopardy, a lot of things uh, if you don't stay in balance. So you don't have to put in any more hours, probably. All you have to do is just make better use of the hours. A cliche we've all heard. It's not the hours you put in, it's what you put in the hours that counts. Now also you need a written set of goals, time management essential, priorities, good plan for the next 10 years especially, some of the things you want to accomplish, let our dreams pull us through, our objectives sustain us, get us up early, keep us up late, or drive us to do the disciplines, read the books, take the classes, study, whatever is necessary and a constant review of your goals, because that's how you determine how to use your time, whatever priorities you're going for. Then you need a plan to achieve your goals and game plans, laying out six months, laying out a year. When you do business internationally, several corporations, we just formed our first Australian corporation. You just got to have game plans to lay all this stuff out. Otherwise, it just doesn't get done. Things get missed. Taxes don't get paid. The details don't get taken care of. You've got to learn to think on paper. And if there's one thing under time management we can get across that's major, uh, that one is it. One of the things that we know about life is that it is always changing. Sometimes you're up, sometimes you're down. Sometimes things go real well, and sometimes they don't. Sometimes you're happy, and sometimes you're sad. Now that's that thing called life. And when we begin to understand and know that, accepting that reality that, that we will never ever have things just on an even kill all the time, that you're gonna have some ups and you're gonna have some downs. But during those down moments, that's where the growth takes place. That's where the work is. Anybody can feel good when they have their health, their bills are paid, they have happy relationships, the children are acting normal. Anybody can be positive then. Anybody can have a larger vision then. Anybody can have faith under those kinds of circumstances. See, but the real challenge, the real challenge of growth, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, comes when you get knocked down. You got to keep your mind concentrated. Next time management essential is learn to say no. Boy, it's easy to overload your calendar, get yourself into all kinds of time management problems simply because you didn't have the, the strength to say no when you should have said no. It's much more difficult to say no and then try to get out of it later, call back, make the arrangements, uh, you know, go through the whole embarrassment. Better to say no than to say yes and have to back out. Ron Reynolds has a good phrase, it says, don't let your mouth overload your back. Life is hard. See, for every time you have a plan, a dream, an aspiration, or a goal, do you know what happens every time you have one of those? This thing comes along called life. It happens to everybody. 
Life has disappointments. It's got peaks and valleys. You're going to lose somebody you care about one day. That's a valley. Somebody going to close the plant you thought was going to stay open so you could retire. That's a valley. Somebody going to fire you for an unjust cause. That's a valley. The people that got your credit card going to sell their company, going to sell their business to another credit card company. Your 18% go up to 26%. You don't even know why now. Your minimum didn't change because you had because it's life. You can stop thinking that life finna be easy because I got news for you today. I suggest to you, if you want to become Diamond, write down five reasons of why it is worth it for you to become a Diamond, to experience that level of achievement. What is it that will give you the drive? What is it that will ignite the courage in you to get up and come back again and again and again? How is it that you would be able, what reasons that can tap in to that deep down feeling that goes to your gut? That no matter how many times you'll get knocked down, that you're coming back. And during those moments when it's hard, not only must you have patience and engage in consistent action, but you must turn to a power greater than yourself and just say, Lord, whatever I face today together, you and I can handle it. And I know some way and somehow, you make a way for me. But here's what the great law says. It does not say if you need, you will reap. That's not what it says. Someone says, well, I really need to reap. Then you must learn the basic law. And without education, see, you'll be left behind. Here's what it says. In order to reap, you must plant. Guess who deserves to reap? Those who plant. So could I deserve something unique and valuable? Yes, if you understand the law, if you understand how it works in your own self-interest. We must plant, we must give to the soil, we must turn it loose, we must let it do its work, we must have patience, take care of it. Now we deserve the reward. If you need, you must plant. Next, if you need to find, in your own self-interest, if you need to find, here's what it says, you must search to find. Finding is reserved for those that search. They're the ones that deserve it. Somebody who says, well, this person really needs to find a good idea, then they must go searching. Good ideas are like mining for gold. You've got to develop the mental machinery to go look, go look, go sifting, go searching, go looking. And if you search, what? You will find the promise is there for everyone in their own self-interest. You'll find all you need to find. If you search for it, you'll find everything you need for your health, everything you need for a flourishing lifestyle, everything you need for a good marriage, everything you need to strengthen your friendship, everything you need for economics, you will find if you'll do like you did today. Spend a couple of days searching, taking a look, seeing if someone has some good ideas to share. All things are conditional. God says, I'm an amateur on God. God says, if you'll move toward me, what? I will move toward you. It's always conditional. Which could also be translated, God says, you don't move, I don't move. You say, well, that's arbitrary. Well, when you're God, you can set it up better. Remember, your planet, you can rearrange all this, change it all. But on this one, here's what's interesting. What you move toward tends to move toward you. If you move toward education, education starts to seek you out. This is one of the unique positive mysteries. Whatever you move toward, moves toward you. If you move toward progress, progress seems to want to now embrace you, move toward you. All life seems to wish to reward its benefactor. If you become the benefactor, you'll receive these incredible rewards. If you're the benefactor to the garden, flowers seem to bloom and say, look at me, look how bright and beautiful I am because you took care of me. I wish to reward you by being beautiful, lovely, spectacular. Your own children, if you become their benefactor, they, they want to reward you with their progress. I taught my daughters how to swim, right? My daughters would say, and to dive. My daughter would say, Daddy, watch, watch. Look, look, watch. Look what you've created here. I mean, you've spent the time with me and, you know, when it didn't go well, now look at me. This is the payoff. Watch me die. I was their benefactor. Now they're... All life wishes to respond to the benefactor. Those who give their time, give their effort, give their patience, give their ideas, the benefit of their experience. Now, whatever has benefited from that wishes to respond. The crop wishes to grow. The child wishes to show you how much progress they've made. That is so exciting. 
Otherwise, the wisdom is wasted. Otherwise, the emotion soon passes. Unless you put it into a disciplined activity, capture. Discipline is called how to capture the emotion and how to capture the wisdom and translate it into equity. Disciplines. See, if you're going to put in a day, just put in the whole day. And if you're going to take some time off, take it all off. Right? Take the whole day off. If you're going to work a day, work a good, long, hard day. If you're going to play, play, play all day. Either work all day or play all day. Because guess what? If you're going to, if you're going to knock off at three and go play, guess what you're thinking about all morning, right? Knocking off at three o'clock. I mean, it just, you know, it's one of those things. You just, it's hard to zero in, you know, on something and make it productive if you're making plans to do something else. Now, part of this depends on what you do and depends on your work schedule and the job you have and the business you have, right? I understand that. Everything we're talking about these two days needs to be altered and monitored and, and, and worked around to fit your particular situation. I understand that. I have a builder friend of mine up in San Jose. His name is Peter Paulson. Uh, Peter's got it down pat. Peter works a week and takes off a week. That's the way he's got it arranged. He's a builder. Now, it's kind of clever, though. See, he works five days, takes off nine. That's a little... He says work a week, take off a week, yeah, but it's really five and nine. Because it's five, and then it's a weekend, and five days, and another weekend, right? So, uh, but what Peter does, the five days he puts in, he works, you know, 14, 16 hours, almost around the clock, keeps two or three secretaries going, gives all the orders, the accountants, the superintendents, the builders, the whole thing, gets it all arranged and works around the clock for five days and then goes, takes off. Now, you know, you might not have the luxury of being able to uh, do it that way, but uh, just work on this. When you work, work. When you play, play. Okay. The next time management essential is analyze how you are and then either compensate for it or change. Sometimes you can remain how you are if you just make other arrangements. My staff discovered I'm a poor courier. They said, Mr. Owen, here's a check for Jerry Haynes. You're going to be up north, right, in the next couple of days? I say, yeah, no problem. Give it to me. I'll see that he gets it. Guess when I next hear about that check? From my cleaners. Saying, Mr. Owen, we found this, right? Now, I say, look, I know I messed up that time, but, you know, next time I'll make sure. See, but it just doesn't work. I'm not good at it. So we've got a little rule at our office that says, don't give the chairman anything. Right? <laughs> don't. It won't arrive. You know, he can talk good, but he's a poor courier. He, it won't get there. So you just got to analyze how you are and then make the compensations for it. Now, you can promise to change all you want, right? But if you're not going to, then make the other arrangements. I finally got somebody to help take care of reading financial statements and taking care of, you know, a lot of corporate business and matters that I promised I would do myself, but I just never did get it done. And it used to be terribly costly to me for IRS and taxes, unbelievable. But I finally got somebody to take care of that. So if you're not gonna change, see, if you're not gonna do it, even though you promise yourself year after year, just then make arrangements to see that it gets done. So analyze how you are. You know, if you're good at bookkeeping, then keep your books. If you're not, just don't keep promising. Just drop off all that mess, you know, twice a week or once a month in somebody's lap and say, here, figure this out and I'll pay you to do it. Sometimes for a hundred a month or something, $50 a month, somebody will just, you know, calculate a lot of stuff for you. Just save yourself all the grief of promising, promising and never doing it. So analyze how you are. That's very important. Time management essential is uh, have a certain time to solve problems. We found that helpful, especially in, in the business world. We say problems after three. Just set them aside. Now, you don't ignore them, but you just set them aside in a certain time frame. All the problem calls, you just call back after three o'clock and just go right through them. Now, also in setting them aside till three o'clock, problem comes in at nine o'clock. And you say, hey, three o'clock, Mr. Rohn's going to get on the phone and make all these problem calls, right? Call back all these answers. Guess what usually happens between nine and three? Somebody calls back and says, hey, tell him not to call. We've already got it worked out. But see, if you take that call when it comes.
Sure enough, now you got to spend time, spend time. We learn in sales training. People all ask questions, ask questions. You say, hey, save that till training class. Bring that question to training class. You just learn those time saving things. So you don't have to cover the same things with each person. Next time management essential is be more alert. Part of the alertness is not only what's going on, but also be alert to looking at all your present procedures. You may have some old outdated procedures, stuff you've been doing for five years and it's taken 10 hours instead of one, right? You could put it on a computer or something. You could just, you know, go through because it's easy to just accumulate a lot of wasted time, wasted motion by not, you know, updating all of your stuff. You know, you don't have to use the old, you, know, you don't have to use that anymore, right? The old uh, calculators. We got the neat, easy stuff, right? Just go through and make sure you're not bogged down with some old, antiquated stuff that's wasting a lot of time. And then be more alert. Take a look at what's going around you. Say, hey, I've been going from here to there and it's taking too much time. In sales management, we teach don't go across town until you've gone across the street. Have they heard your story across the street? Guys, I got this hot prospect 40 miles away. <laughs> It just probably isn't worth the time. It's too far. You know, the, the span of distance is too long. Just shorten up the span. So be alert as to those kind of time wasters.